అందరూ హలో అందరూ వందనములు నా డోంట్ బీ అఫ్రైడ్ ఐ వాంట్ స్పీక్ ఇన్ తెలుగు ఇది ఐ డోంట్ వాంట్ టు కిల్ తెలుగు హియర్ ఇన్ ఆన్ స్టేజ్ మా ఎంగేజ్మెంట్ విత్ mountains forests and rivers goes back to my early childhood when i say my engagement not in terms of uh, enjoying nature or its resource i experienced these dimensions of nature's expression in many ways as an intrinsic part of myself particularly with kaveri on the banks of kaveri i was born and i grew up so from the age of 12 to 17 almost every day i swam in kaveri when i was around 17 years of age i rafted down kaveri for 163 kilometers from bagamandla to mysore for 13 days just on four truck tubes and a few bamboos i lived off the river and i did not feel kaveri as a water body but as a life much larger than myself as a life which nurtured a million other lives a phenomenal pheno a phenomenal expression of life itself in the last 25 years i have been watching the depletion of rivers across the country but in the last 7 to 8 years this depletion has become very steep so steep that it's alarming and many scientific studies clearly say by 2030 many of these rivers which have been perennial for ages are going to become seasonal already many rivers have become seasonal your krishna unfortunately has become seasonal Kaveri has become seasonal, Narmada has become seasonal, like this we can go on. Inflict pain upon ourselves by saying that rivers which were perennial just twenty-five years ago have all become seasonal now and there is no other cause than ourselves for this. We as a generation of people have taken the largest bite of this planet and it's time that we do some corrective or compensatory action it is towards this, this rally of rivers. All of you, I know you're not rallying for rivers, you're just protecting yourself and that's good. I want you to do this for the next one month. Wherever you go, if it is sun like this, if it's rain like that, if there is nothing, like this. Because you need to understand this. This is the moment in our lives either we do the right things or we sit by and watch disasters to unfold. This is not alarmist activist talk, this is proper science that we are heading towards a disaster. The problem is we have a very short memory. Before 1950s, every second, third year we used to have famines. When famines happened, people did not die in dozens or hundreds or thousands, but they died in millions. 1943 Bengal famine killed over 3.25 million people. But recently, I was listening to uh, Sashi Tharoor, he's saying the actual statistic is 5.2 million people. Three or five, it doesn't matter. Over three million people dying in two and a half months' time not because of a nuclear bomb or something, sitting quietly, not having the energy to move, without food and water, quietly dying, we cannot forget that suffering and once again drive the country in that direction. But I must say, I am not to the village we want, so that we will grow five varieties of fruits and protect the trees and nurture the trees, this is only for children below fifteen years of age so that they know the joy of plucking the fruit and eating, not going to the market and eating. Free of cost, only thing is you can't take it, you can't pluck the fruit and take it. You can sit there and eat as much as you want so that 
our children in the villages. This is one thing I always observe wherever I travel in the world, whichever part of the world I travel in, first thing I observe is how are the children? Because children in many ways are the most precious stuff that people have in their life. If you look at the condition of the child, you know the condition of what that society is in many ways. But I find even if you go to remote parts of Africa, they may ha not have a piece of cloth on them, the country is in very bad state in many, many ways, but children are bouncy and healthy. But if you go into our villages, unfortunately, we see our children not healthy, squawny and struggling to walk. This is because shifting from subsistence farming to cash farming. People may have little more money, they have cell phones, they have motorcycles, they have tractors, but they are not eating the food as they should. Most of the people are just eating rice, tamarind, chili, onion. They know how to make their food tasty, but there is no nourishment. One of the best things we can do is, we are thinking of this combination, which I'm sure in this state it's much easier to do, is a fish pond and a fruit garden, where anybody can go and fish and pluck the fruit only for children, but fish for everybody. Anybody can go and fish, not in nets, but they can fish and eat the fish. If we bring this, the malnutrition condition can change dramatically. Why am I talking about malnourishment when I'm supposed to be rallying for rivers? You must understand this. If anything significant has to happen in this country, or in any country for that matter, first thing is you must take care of the well-being of the people. If you do not take care of the well-being of the people and talk about great things of raising new mountains, these things are not going to happen, they are going to be remaining empty talk. If it has to happen, we have to show people how it is going to benefit them. Because we are still a need-based society and we always will be unfortunately, unless our consciousness rises to such a point that we will think beyond our needs. Right now, whether you go to the marketplace or you get married, you are thinking of what is… what will I get out of this, yes or no? Hello, let's be straight about this. Hello? It doesn't matter what you do, personal or public, aren't you… are you not thinking in what way will it benefit me? So we are a need-based human beings yet. So when we are in this condition, it's very important that this is conducted in a strategic manner, not in an emotional manner. This is the biggest problem in the country, we have big emotions. I don't trust emotion anymore because I have seen people worshipping Ganga this moment and next moment they're spitting in the same Ganga and walking away without any emotion. So I don't trust your emotion. We need an enforceable law, an implementable law, a law as unambiguous as, let's say, traffic rules, you're supposed to drive on the left side, if you drive on the right side, within ten minutes you will be picked up and there is a down because this is important. This is once in a lifetime chance that we have because when I was in Puducherry, the chief minister there, Sri Narayan Swami was saying, Sadhguru, twenty-four years ago when I was in Rajiv Gandhi's cabinet, we had a similar, nearly similar policy document prepared. All the experts agreed with this, but we could not get the concurrence of the state. This time around, these sixteen states which we are driving through, why sixteen means these sixteen are the most heavily farmed states. These sixteen states we are driving through, only two chief ministers I actually met and explained. All the others, including your chief minister, we just wrote a letter within fifteen days, all of them, confirm the dates for participation in the rally for rivers. This shows… this shows we are not the same people who we were twenty-five years ago. Here you see a spectrum of political parties sitting together for the same cause. This shows we are not the same people. The ignorance with which we handled twenty-five years ago, we are not going to do the same again now. One more aspect why we are driving through the entire country is, if you pass a policy like this and start implementation, even a very aggressive implementation will take ten to fifteen years of implementation. 
and it will take another five to ten years for the rivers to actually rise. This means twenty to twenty-five years to see results. This means four to five democratically elected governments would have come and gone. Many of us may not be alive to see this. If a government has to go for a policy of this long-term nature, there are many aspects involved in this, many complexities in execution, a huge financial outlay. If they have to do it, we being a democratic nation, it is the business of every citizen to clearly make a statement that we as citizens have come of age, we have matured, we are no more a freebie generation. If you do something for the long-term well-being of this nation, for the future generations of this country, we are with you. This is the statement you're making when you vote for Rally for Rivers with this missed call. And I want every one of you to participate and make sure everybody in Vijaywada does the same, everybody in Andhra Pradesh does the same, because this is our moment of contention. Are we going to be a disastrous generation or are we going to be a responsible generation? This is the question. In our lives, if we do not do what we cannot do, that's not